Kodiak Outdoors here with you today and today we're gonna go ahead and work on a 1996 Corvette tone generator now this will work for all vehicles not just a 1996 Corvette if your tone generator just started to sound like it was being strangled to death or I don't know on its last leg perhaps or it just worked when it wanted to this is the video for you let's have a console here you have your radio here your HVAC controls here and your driver informate not infotainment because it's not it's an information console or cluster gauge whatever you want to call it it just you know lets you know it's got a little bunch of buttons and you know lights and stuff anyhow that goes right here and the tone generator is behind this panel and it was sitting right up here on top of the passive keyless entry or module I believe and it was velcroed so I went ahead and trimmed it here but um, anyhow let's go ahead and uh, take this bad boy out and get it repaired all right okay today we're gonna go ahead and work on this tone generator um, before I took it out it wasn't working at all when I took it out and I know this is happening to other people I took it entirely out of the, the box plugged it back in it worked perfect it sounded perfect when you put it back in the box plug it back in it sounds like it's you know bloody murder but anyhow moving on it came with a bigger piece of velcro here I mean it literally covered all here and had some you know uh, excess so what I did is I just went ahead and trimmed it I mean you really don't need that much on there to you know just to keep this little light plastic box in place I mean, it's not like we're going off-roading in the Corvettes, right? Well, anyhow, first things first, uh, you want to go ahead and open the box. And this way. No, it's good. You want to pry these little things up here. Open it up. And push on these pins. It'll slide right out set your case aside this is like some I guess some sort of diaphragm a little speaker in there looks like uh, looks like a little coil of some sort and I guess the small tones are echoed in this diaphragm here that's what it seems like um, I don't know if these contacts are loose or what's going on well, this capacitor looks good like I said it, it can't be any component on here none of the ICs no resistors you know none of this stuff this has got a pretty good shelf life but anyhow um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is re flow a lot of this stuff here now I'm not gonna replace the solder I'm just gonna go ahead and just heat it up let it melt and if I see it disappear then maybe I'll add some hopefully it works see what happens I think I'm just gonna like re-solder some of these I don't think I'm gonna re-solder the entire thing don't think it has anything to do with all of these components I am more than sure it's 
these three pins now that I think about it because if you put it back in the box if it works fine like this and you put it back in the box this is not exactly parallel with the board I don't know if the camera picks it up but you can see I mean this does have a slight curve but you can see that these are not parallel with this and considering that when you put this into here I noticed that those holes are not perfect either it looks like it's pushing these pins up so with time I believe it's loosening these connections here because of the flexing <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and let's see this bad boy is powerful enough oh yeah there it goes yay actually went from under. Yeah. Soak it up, baby. Soak it up. Yeah, doing these two and this probably was a waste, but I know I came across some other forums where somebody was, uh, you know, just trying out something and they tried out this here that holds the diaphragm in place and it worked for them, so I figured what the hey. I think my question now is should I try this one because this is actually part of the cylinder that holds on to that piece. You can tell by the <laughs> you can tell by the spot where somebody wiped their butt right here too. Alright, popped it back in here, snap in. Alright. Well, look at that. So I have the car on, turn it off, have the keys and light on, have the keys out, light still on. So of course you can tell by this here. Yeah. I 
first I thought it was these cables here. At first I thought it was these cables. They look kind of beat up right here where they connected toward to these uh clamps or whatever you want to call them. The connectors, blah blah blah. Anyhow they look kind of um beat up there and I figured that the wire inside had already broken because of course there's a whole bunch of little strands of wires and they're pretty delicate. You know, with time you keep bending them back and forth, they're gonna break. Anyhow, I figured uh, most of the strands inside were already broken. So, um, initially I was gonna take that wire harness apart and and uh, shorten them a little bit, but, you know, put it back together. But I figured, you know what, let me try just re-soldering the uh, generator here, put it back in, wiggle the wires again and see if it works and well it it worked clearly as you can see well if you didn't watch the video before this one uh, the tone generator is actually located right here above the uh, PKE which is the uh, passive key list entry uh, there's a module right here and of course it's velcro down I don't know if all the models are like that but this one was it's 96 this one was velcroed down and I trimmed it so that it's not, you know, so wedged in there. And at the same time, I cut uh, some small pieces out, as a matter of fact. You're probably thinking, you know, the size of the hole, my goodness, that's probably a big piece of plastic I took out. Actually, it isn't. This is uh, all I took off right here, basically. This one was here, as well. And then this one was on top. So, I mean, that's basically the way it was right there. It was open. It doesn't look like anybody cut it because it's not squared. But, um, yeah, I just cut it this way. Notched it all up here on the top. Made sure it was squared the best I could just to make it look nice. And then I pried it off the daggum velcro pulled it disconnected it and then I pulled the uh, the harness down here in case I decide to relocate it you know in case it decides to go bad again and if somebody else owns the vehicle well they can actually uh, get to it much easier but with that being said they're probably gonna do the research and they're not gonna see it and they're gonna be like hey it's not here so yeah maybe I should put it back where it was at anyhow I mean there's hardly any velcro on it anyways it won't be as stuck anymore but hey now you know how to fix your uh, daggum tone generator I'm sure this will work for all years not just necessarily a 96 Corvette give it a thumbs up if you like this video otherwise subscribe and stay tuned for further content I love the outdoors I like being outside so basically that's what my channel is all about not just fishing and hunting. It's about being outside and enjoying nature.